Hello, Internet. What is the purpose of this video? Well, uh, it's to let you know a few things that are going on in my life and to sort of uh, address a couple of issues that, um, well, I mean, they're difficult for me to talk about, but I do have to talk about them. But bear with me, because uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to include pictures of myself in my Halloween costume uh, that uh, I didn't get a chance to show before. So uh, sort of a nice little end to the video that you can look forward to. So just to let you all know, uh, they did schedule me for my first treatment, which is uh, Thursday next week. Uh, I actually have a, it's weird, I have a, a class they call it a class. I come in and I watch a video and, and I do that Wednesday morning. Thursday morning, I go in for the uh, first treatment. So I will update about that, you know, when it happens. Um, it is becoming increasingly likely that I am not going to make it. I don't base this on anything specific. It's everything that I've gone through in the past month and a half. Um, from the CT scan uh, and the shock of learning that my cancer is back, and aggressively so, to the symptoms that I've been feeling lately, um, not just the bloating in my belly, but uh, mild pain in the liver area and... Um, uh, and almost but not quite nausea. It's kind of hard to describe. And I'll say some of it's kind of hard to uh, tell apart from anxiety, which, of course, I'm feeling. Uh, elevated heart rate, sweaty palms, um, shaky. And it's like I'm at a point now where it's like what is or isn't a symptom uh, of what I'm going through? Uh, is it just nerves or is it my liver failing. Um, I don't know. But from what the liver doctor said and from what the oncologist said, they're going to do what they can to keep me alive, but it doesn't look good. Again, I'm not just giving up. I'm not just rolling over and dying. I'm going to keep going with this treatment and, um, and, and do what I can uh, to... Um, to survive, but I have to be practical. Um, I have to prepare myself for the possibility, the distinct possibility that this is the end for me and soon. And to that end, I'm kind of making this video to sort of prepare all of you. And I know this is going to be a little bit morbid, but I'm going to make a video that is designed to be posted posthumously. Um, a sort of final goodbye. I'm not going to say it here, because this isn't goodbye now. I'm not going to say goodbye until it's over. Um, but the final video uh, would probably be the one that, that I make that, that's, you know, it'll be posted after I die. Um, I'll set it up with a friend to do that for me. Three years is a long time to fight cancer. And there's been a lot of ups and downs. And I really appreciate that so many people, complete strangers on the internet, have elected to join me on that journey. And at least in spirit, stand by my side. And I'll never get to know all of you, but it makes a difference all the same. And for me to put myself out there to the world and for the world to respond the way it has, it's, it's encouraging. And I, and I really appreciate it. And you know, it's funny because throughout this whole thing from start to now, up until this, while I certainly worried over everything. I worried about, you know, test results. I worried about hospital visits. I worried about uh, the outcome of my treatments, surgery, 
the long ass recovery from my surgery. And certainly there were times when I really did think I was about to die, but it didn't have time to loom over me. Not in the same sense. Like it was a shadow following me before, but now here it is. A, a three dimensional thing. It's not a shadow anymore. It's right next to me. And it feels a lot more real than it ever has before. And I don't think anybody can fully understand what it is to face their mortality until they do it themselves. And it is terrifying. And it's sort of dominating my view. And it's hard to see anything else. And I'm trying. I'm trying to see other than my impending demise. And it's hard when it's just looming right there in front of me and, and getting bigger as it gets closer and just filling up my view and I, and I can't see anything else. And I've just been so tired lately. And again, is, is, is that a symptom of my liver failing? I don't know. Or is it just that I'm just so overwhelmed by this that I can't process for very long and I need to shut down? I don't know. Like I took a nap today, a two hour nap, and it's weird. Like I'm just not the kind of person that takes naps. Cause I don't want to die. Um, and I really thought I was going to make it. I have so, so many stupid regrets. Um, people in my life that I didn't appreciate enough. Or things left unsaid or said the wrong way. Roads not taken, opportunities ignored, doors that I let shut and then just never tried to open again. And I think everybody has those. I wish I could be one of those people that can go out saying no regrets, but no. I have regrets. And I feel like You can't live in this world and not have a few. Don't make the mistake I did. Don't ignore the possibilities. Assuming that they'll always be there. And when you build a bridge between yourself and another human being, as long as that bridge is important to you, keep it strong. I didn't do enough of that. Keep that bridge strong. I'm kind of saying all the stuff that I would say in a farewell video. So maybe I should stop now and save it for that. Um, as far as getting my affairs in order is concerned, I'm getting some help with that through family. Um, I trust my friends and family not to make a big deal out of my stuff. Nobody's going to fight over it. I don't care. It's stuff. Uh, I will pick out some, some things that I want specific people to have. And, um, and I'll probably draw up some legal document 
de detailing that. Um, my life insurance policy is actually in the name of my nephew. Uh, so hopefully that'll be a good chunk of change for him uh, when it comes time for him to get into college, if that's the direction he chooses to go. Uh, I'm probably going to be cremated and my friends and family will have an opportunity to get a portion of ashes if they so choose. Oh, and my my short horror stories, which um, if you remember, I had um, posted a video a while back about um, doing a, a podcast show uh, with my short horror stories. Well, that unfortunately had to get put on hold due to COVID. Um, we weren't able to be in the same place to record uh, for that. So uh, kind of put an end to it. However, I am trying to work something out. I can't really say much more than this. I'm trying to work something out where it happens in a different way. I, I feel like there's like a legal line I can't cross here, but I'm, I'm working on it. And, um, and hopefully... Um, my stuff will be, uh, put out in, into the world in this way. Uh, people will be able to, uh, experience my stories that way. Um, so I'm just trying to make sure that, um, it all just, it doesn't just all disappear because, because I like my stories. I think my stories are good. I just, I get really worried, uh, very nervous. Because I don't know how much time I got. It could, it could happen at any time. I um I set something up with friends, uh, sort of a, an emergency uh, situation. A friend of mine, um, uh, he uh, he's going to be my nine one one call. So basically, he has phone numbers of family and friends that I would want to uh, contact in the event of an emergency. And so if something happens, like I'm suddenly very, very sick and I have to go to the hospital. And if that happens, I'm probably not going to make it because my liver failing means I'm going to die. They, they would be able to do something for me uh, to keep me around for a little while. But once your liver, liver goes, that's it. You're done. Um, so if that happens and I have to rush myself to the hospital, there's a hospital five minutes away from me. Um, I would just text him 911 and he would then call my family and friends to let me know. Uh, and, uh, and then if he can meet me at the hospital, um, and then, uh, hopefully those people uh, can can come be with me at the end. So there's that. God, I feel I feel sick. I feel sick to my stomach. Again, is it nerves? I don't know. It's this awful feeling in my gut, and that bloating feeling never really went away. And I look at my belly, and it is distended in this weird way. I'm not going to show you, but. Um, it just, it feels so uncomfortable and it's a constant reminder. And I think that's one of the big things because it's like, I mean, obviously undergoing chemotherapy, I felt sick, but that was the chemicals being pumped into me and that was with a purpose. And so that purpose felt like the, the, the illness that I felt was a sign of improvement or at least a road toward recovery. Uh, this is not that. And like for so much of my experience with cancer, I could just pretend I didn't have it because I never felt any symptoms. But now I do. So disturbing. And I'm so afraid all the time. I know this is not a good look for me. Because I'm so used to putting out uh, a very positive, very brave face. But I said a long time ago that I wasn't going to sugarcoat this journey. And so what I'm feeling now, I, I feel the need to share. 
because I am very afraid. Very afraid. And, uh, and I, and it's this ticking time bomb, but I can't even, you know, see a, a countdown. I just know that it's happening, that it's coming. <coughs> I'm sweating. I'm coughing. I'm nauseous. I don't have a temperature. Uh, I checked. I've been checking. Um, trust me, if I thought, if I really thought that this was it, then I would be going to the hospital right now. So don't don't go thinking that I'm sitting here while I should be, you know, addressing this. I'm just, God, I'm just really worried. Okay, um, I have to trim this down a lot. So yeah, that's, that's kind of it. Me experiencing this, being afraid, hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. And, um, and that's really all I can do. And feel pushed up against a wall, and the wall is pushing me, pushing me towards a cliff. And, and I can't climb over this wall. I can't get around it. It's terrifying. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. All right. Um, so as promised, I'm going to end this on as positive a note as I possibly can. Here are pictures of my Halloween costume. I had been hoping to wear this to some big fun Halloween party. <sighs> Goddamn COVID completely ruined that. So the very next best thing was to have a friend take pictures of me in the costume. And we did this outside of a cathedral nearby just to give it that sort of Gothic look. Um, so uh, here's my pictures. I hope you like them. Um, sorry, I didn't get them out there sooner. And um, I'll keep you all informed how things go. And in the meantime, I'll do my best to soldier on and to uh, put on that brave face and to uh, meet this with as much dignity as I can muster. Thank you all so much. Take care. And see you next time.